Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back for another episode of the Robin Graham show. Have you felt like you've been struggling in area, any areas in your life, maybe your health, maybe sleep, maybe, maybe even your business, you just feel off kilter out of sync. Well, Today's guest is going to give us some really helpful tips on how we can use play, P-L-A-Y, to really create sustainable lifelong changes to help us be more successful. There's You look at people in life and you think, wow, they're so successful and I'm just sitting here struggling. Well, what are the keys to that? And one of those keys is what we're going to talk about today, and it's called play. And that is a specific method that Janet uses for coaching her clients to better health and creating those sustainable lifelong changes. So hold on to your hats because this is going to be a really good one. And I know you're going to have actionable take actionable takeaways that you're going to be able to implement in your daily lives to really transform, get out of that rut, the struggle, and start seeing progress and more success as well. Without further ado, Janet Olmstead, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thanks, Robin. It's awesome to be here. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, it's going to be a good one for sure. I love anything related to health and wellness. So this is going to be, and I think as, as, as human beings for one, as moms as two, but then also as entrepreneurs, it's really hard to create sustainable habits. I know I'm guilty. I, you know, I exercise every day. I try to eat really healthy, but there are so many days where it's okay, I'll grab a protein bar and an orange. And that's my, that's what I get because it's back Mm -hmm, to back mm -hmm. to back to back. And so it's really Mm -hmm. hard sometimes to sustain all of those good things, the goodness in our lives to be able to keep us moving forward. So I can't wait to talk about all this, but before we do, will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey? What brought you to this point where you're at today? Sure. Thank you. Uh, My name is Janet. I am from Toronto, Canada. I am a play expert, health coach, and author of The Playbook, How to Get in the Habit of Good Health. I'm in, I've am i been in the health and wellness industry for over 20 years, both as a personal trainer and as a behavior change health coach. And, um, you know, quite frankly, after helping countless clients over the years through their health journey, one of the common things I see, uh, to your point, and particularly the women, the women I serve that are over 50, um, is that through no fault of their own, like you say, they're on the run, they're putting other people first, they're just trying to do it all. This is a very common theme that I get, mm-hmm. um, that they that a lot of the daily grind falls on them. But at some point, at some point in this journey, they wake up and think, oh my gosh, like, what about me? What about my health? Whether a doctor has said to them, look, Um, you know, you're in midlife, you have uh, X, Y, and Z going on, and uh, here's a list of things you need to change. And that is so overwhelming for people. You know, hacks work for a while, you know, 12 weeks to this and 20 weeks to that. But after a while, people deserve and want sustainable, lasting change to their health. And it doesn't have to be this huge mountain you need to climb. There are simple ways to put things in place to boost your mental health, physical health, emotional health through habits and behaviors that help you thrive Mm because we deserve to thrive. And my method that you touched on a little bit earlier um, takes the guesswork out of having to figure it all out on your own and use, you know, the expertise of my services over the years to help you make those changes forever. So it's, and it's you know, fun. And it's fun. I <laughs> love it. it or not. I love yeah. it. So, you know, I say that all the time because I do so much speaking on anxiety because of my book. And, you know, that's one of the things that I always say is to, to tap into movement and creativity because the two of them are such medicine for the mind. But it's funny, we, when we think of play, oftentimes I think as we get older, it's like, well, I I shouldn't be playing. I should be doing X, Y, Z. And I think especially as business owners, we get sucked into that. Like, I don't have time to play. I've got to get work done. I've got to do X, Y, Z. Or, well, everybody's watching this show. I'm going to watch this show. And maybe that's play, but I don't know. I'm not a big TV person. So anyway, (laughs) I digress. But um, 
I, I do want to point out what you said, you know, people start feeling certain ways, they go to the doctor and the doctor gives this laundry list of ways of how, how to change. And as you, you know, you mentioned midlife and hormones play such a significant part on our lives and our bodies. And don't you kind of, I mean, I don't know, for me as a woman, I get tired of, well, it's hormones it's hormones as an excuse. And it's like, it's kind of like I did a podcast episode a few weeks ago of like, anxiety is not an excuse. Hormones are not an excuse. Like you can actually take action and implement changes in your life so that those hormones aren't causing you conflict or struggle or feeling something other than healthy and well. So, okay, let's, I digress. I could talk about this stuff all day, but anyway, and I'm always- (laughs) No, me too. I'm always That's opinionated. Good. So, you know, I got to throw right. that in there too. But so tell us about the play method. So play uh, is, well, my play method is a coaching methodology I came up with. I like your mug, by the way. Oh, happy day. Um, the play method is, uh, stands for please look after yourself. And play also, as to your earlier point, is a thing a lot of people lose touch with as they age and don't feel they can give themselves permission to play. So I'll talk about that as part of one of the actionable steps um, in my play method. Anyway, um, please look after yourself. You know, we all deserve that. And um, it does, yes, hormones are absolutely part of the factor, but let's just remember hormones have been a factor our whole life. We, like we all hit yeah. puberty and we're all gonna hit horm- um, menopause. Like it's, it's a thing and it's not the excuse. You're right, it's part of the equation. So, um, I help people with their movement, nutrition, sleep, and of course, stress management as entrepreneurs. We know all about that. And what makes people successful versus people that continue to struggle are, you know, I help people to fundamentally understand what their vision is. You know, you wouldn't drive a car or you wouldn't go on a trip without a map or a GPS. It's the same with your health. You know, a lot of people say, I want X, Y, Z as their ultimate dream. Well, great. So you can have all that, but how are you going to get there? When you are living in alignment with your vision, there is so much power in when you lose track or you get off track, you keep coming back to that vision because it's really the driving factor about making you successful. And everybody has different reasons and visions for what they imagine their future to be. Like, do you want to, a lot of people start with, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. Well, that's awesome, you know? why you know we go through the five whys have you you heard of that Mm -hmm, i would mm -hmm. imagine yeah Um, in fact we just had that is um i'm trying to think of is it a line the organization that came up with that um because we just had on actually the episode just aired this week but um okay we just had sarah k ramsey on and she was talking about how it's not, this is funny because it's actually, she was like, oh, I don't like that method at all. It's really diving into really, really, Mm -hmm. really, and going Mm -hmm. deeper, deeper, deeper. So the same exact concept, a different word, Same. but I will link that episode in the show notes listeners. Cause I think both perspectives are going to be so great when you marry these two conversations, because Sarah talked about problem solving and what, what happens when we're struggling and we're out of line we have a problem. So we have a problem. Listen to this episode and then go listen to that episode because it'll really tie things together for you. Okay. Sorry. I interrupted you. No, it's all right. No, it's, (laughs) I think it's really, uh, it's really invaluable to have the two perspectives because really we're talking about the same thing. And when it comes to your health, you know, why do you want the things you want? Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of those, a lot of those um, choices are less to do with physical and more emotional balance um, when you really start to dig down. A lot of those problems are fixable, and this is why it's sustainable, because it takes time, right? These are things, when you are living in alignment with your vision or your why, it's mind-blowing how how you can change a little bit at a time sustainably to get the things you want for your health. That's the first part of my play method, really helping people Mm -hmm. with their vision and their why. The second big piece of this play uh, method is uh, when I help women and men understand that you don't have to go to a gym. You, well, first of all, I don't know if you've heard of the Blue Zones. Have you heard of the Blue Zones? The Blue Zones, Dan Butner. Yep. He went around the world and found the longest living people 
and what their commonalities were. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, that's a bird's eye view of what it's all about. But one of the things he discovers is the people who have lived the longest have never stepped foot in a gym. Mm-hmm. They move naturally throughout the day. And to me, that's playful. And is there one way to do it? No. Do you like to garden? Do you like to uh, yoga? Do you like Tai Chi? Do you like swimming? Like the, the world can be your playground when you understand that it doesn't have to all be done in a gym. A gym is a very important piece for sure if that's the only place you can load your muscles for resistance training or join a class or it's a community-based thing. And that's really what it, it entails, right? Finding like-minded people that like to move the way you do and making it fun and playful. You know, as a trainer, there are absolute parameters around the exercise prescriptions that people need to meet the, I call it the bare ass minimum, the bare minimum of 20 minutes a day of cardio or aerobic pumping, heart pumping movement. And 150 minutes a week is the bare minimum everybody needs to fight chronic disease. Yet 1.4 billion people in the world aren't doing that. They're not even getting 20 minutes a day. So when I help teach people that that 20 minutes doesn't have to be done all at once. So yeah, we're all busy entrepreneurs and we've got a laundry list of things that we've got to check off in the day. Why not put in 10 minutes of play? And what's that play to you? How do you like to play, Robin? Mm, if I'm going to play, well, multiple things. I <laughs> multi-passionate person here, but gar- I love gardening and I yeah. love photography, both which get me outside and moving. Like, you know, if I'm creating still lifes, then I'm, it's constant motion. Yeah. And the outdoors is, I mean, I think if anything through the pandemic, the outdoors wasn't canceled and, you know, people re- uniting for lack of a better word with yeah. going outside and getting fresh air. I, a walk counts, you know, yeah. it doesn't have to be this hour intense craziness that people have been sold on the idea. Cause that's, and that's okay, but that's how trainers get paid by the hour. So that's why people think they need an hour workout. It's not true. You, you do need though minimum 20 minutes or 150 minutes a week in any way that adds up to you in your life. But if you schedule it in your calendar, throughout the day, take a play break. Um, I've got lots of ideas and, and my clients often, I mean, I'm not here to tell them how to play. They figure out what speaks to them. Often we go back to what you like to do as a kid. Cause when you figure that out, y- you tap into that inner kid. It's makes it joyful because mm-hmm. moving your body needs to be fun or you won't do it. So that's yeah. the second piece of the play method. You know, I, um, I bring in what you liked when you were a kid a lot. When I talk about like my purpose method Mm -hmm. and purpose equation formula, I should say, because when you look back to what made you feel excited, what gave you passion, you know, and, and tapping back into that creativity that we often lose, right? We lose playfulness and creativity because of the chaos of life. So Mm -hmm. reflecting back to your childhood to see, well, what stimulated you? What excited you? Maybe it's just going and picking flowers. Like it could be anything, right? Anything. anything. Yes. And yes. It's, it's funny how when you tap back into that, your creativity mm-hmm. increases. And anytime mm-hmm. creativity increases, you decrease all of the stress hormones like cortisol and you can bring yourself back to more of a resting state so you can focus better. So I, I love this so much, but I love that you brought in... Um, like going back to your childhood, even your visions, like what is your vision for yourself now? Because what did you envision yourself being as an adult, you know, and maybe that will help you find that true vision for what you want in your life and health now. So, okay. I rambled a bit, but go (laughs) ahead. The next, um, the next part is what for a, I guess. Right. Uh, yes. So keep it simple. It's it, they don't all PLA way doesn't necessarily congregate with words, except the third big point of my play method is keep it simple. I kind of touched on that, you know, people thinking they need an hour, mm-hmm. um, you know, breaking behaviors into tangible, actionable steps, you know, so let's use um, uh, e- eating more vegetables. Someone feels or a doctor says, you know, you need to eat more vegetables and someone says, 
I don't like vegetables. Okay, not a problem. So how can we keep that simple? How can we figure out for someone what kind of vegetables they like and that they are, they're ready, willing, and able to eat? You know, uh, there's many points to this, you know, behind all of these things. Sure. But in the simplicity, why don't you write down the vegetables you like? Even if it's two, can you eat those every day? You know, simple, keep it simple. And then, hey, maybe you're thinking, oh, this is kind of easy. Totally the most important part here. Keep it easy. Because when it's easy, it's like if it's a nine or 10 out of 10, I can do that. No problem. People are going to keep doing it. Right. If it's a, oh, gosh, like oh, that's a five. Well, okay. Well, we'll make it a six. What would make it a seven? What would make it, you know, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. And so I had a client that literally was who I'm talking about. Um, two vegetables in, you know, we just worked at how can you, can you stir fry those vegetables? Can you eat them raw? Can you put them in a smoothie? Like, how can we just boost the nutrition piece for you simply and that you're going to succeed? And that list grew over time. After six months, she was eating 15, 20 different kinds of vegetables because she was excited and she wanted to experiment. And that goes for all these things, whether it's sleep or managing stress and exercise, you know, find something, start and keep it simple. And when you keep it simple, you're more likely to be consistent. And when you're consistent, the changes will happen. It's, it's that simple. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I love it. Simplicity is key with every aspect of our life, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I think people are surprised that when they work with me in behavior change, there is no one size fits all. There really isn't. Just as an entrepreneur, you know, you you may come from the same place or, or like the same thing or or want to serve the same people, but how you come at it and how I come at it are totally different ways, which is the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship and about, you know, finding the things that work for you and the ways that you want to show up in the world. I, yeah, I think it's uh it's wonderful when people can make those sustainable changes and make them last because that's what we all want. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I would love your perspective on this because I see a lot on, I mean, not really on Instagram that often, but used to, I would see so much content on workouts and diets mm -hmm. and, you know, all these ads pop up. Mm -hmm. And I would love for you to share your perspective on that. I mean, I obviously have an opinion and I feel like the more simple we keep things and the more organically we make behavioral changes, the better and more sustainable versus following these fad diets or these fad workouts. I would love your perspective on that. Uh, well, to be quite frank, it frustrates me that all of these, um, I call them shiny object syndrome, right? You're like, oh, mm -hmm. that looks good. I'm going to try that. Or that looks good. I'm going to try that. There's nothing wrong with trying things as long as you can make it last. Um, it's unfortunate that it's a bit of the wild west. There are um, sometimes no rule, uh, no, not enough boundaries around some of the extremes. People think, oh, uh, this worked for me, X, Y, Z. So I'm going to teach people X, Y, Z, even though it may not align with their environment, where they live, how they live their life already. Like those are huge pieces into why someone would choose to follow or do something mm -hmm. from an Instagram person. Um, I think there's good quality there, but I think what you, and there's bad quality, <laughs> but I think what you say um, from the beginning is, you know, when you are searching out and trying to find something, the fun piece and sustainability have to be there. And a lot of those things aren't forever. And they're often um, can be jeopardizing to your health. So, mm -hmm. you know, do your, do your research, do your due dil diligence, you know, try it on. If it works great. If it doesn't try something else, there's no problem with trying things, but one day you're going to want to like work with someone that has been in the trenches and understands what works um, for the long haul. Cause well, that's, that's what kind of the experts. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was getting at too, because I think sometimes you see these things on these ads, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you, or TV, TV is another good example, but you know, you <laughs> oh, see yeah. these, you know, you see these commercials and you think, 
oh, wow, that's working for them. And they look like they're my age. I should try that. But what I think people forget is that we all have innate abilities, number one, Mm -hmm, different levels mm -hmm. of coordination. We all have different um, modalities in terms of how we, maybe modalities isn't the right word, or yeah, it is, I guess, that we have access to. But then you also have just like your gastrointestinal tract, you have your brain, (laughs) you have how you're sleeping, you have all these other components that need to be customized to you and your brain and your body versus seeing something that's on TV and going, oh yeah, that looks great. I'm going to try that because if it worked for them, it'll work for me. But if your metabolism is off or you have some sort of, you know, issue in your gut, that may not work for you. So, or an injury or an injury or an injury. Exactly. Right. Or a history of, um, anything. I mean, uh, I think what you're saying is really invaluable because those things that look like they work are often um, more about money and less about looking at the whole person. Well, and the whole per- more of the quick fix mindset, right? How, totally. how often people went and I just had this um, interview I did with Sarah Samples where we talked about how building your personal brand takes time. And oh, it takes so much time. We have to learn at some point to have patience, whether we're building a business or we are building our bodies and our minds, because it does take discipline. It takes practice and it takes time. Like nothing happens overnight. mm -hmm. Like the metaphor uh, I often use about compounding interest in the bank, Mm -hmm. right? You know, a 1% a day improvement over time, no matter what behavior, but, but in your health, because that's what we're talking about, adds up to a very large deposit at the end of your life. And that's what we're all trying to work towards, right? It's not about like right here, right now. It's, it is about the vision of your future. And it is about keeping in alignment with that and showing up every day consistently because nothing happens overnight. I was actually just talking to um, on another podcast too. And we were talking about me writing my book. Same thing. I thought I could just whip my book off in six months, but no, no, No. it it Uh -uh. was a perfect example of patience and time. Mm -hmm. And, and then when it's done, it's done right. Just like your health, when you invest and you take the time, you really figure out the sustainable way to show up as your best self. So you can play with your grandkids or you Mm -hmm. can, you know, do your bucket list items, you know, any of those things. Cause that's, we want our health to be there in the future. Yeah. We don't want to jeopardize it in for the short term for, for no reason. There's no reason yeah. to have to do that. We're yeah. convinced that it is the right reason. Yeah, it's exactly. Not. It's that quick fix mentality. And I think that um, so much of this in health and business too, is we're living in this new age woo-woo culture where it's, oh, well, you can just manifest that. Or, oh, well, you can just take, do this or, you know, whatever. And it's like, no, it like none of that is going to give you sustainability. And I think mm-hmm. anytime it's a quick fix, run, because it's not <laughs> going to be sustainable. Totally. Whether it's yeah. manifesting $10,000 or manifesting clients in your business, or it is manifesting a new body, it is not going to be sustainable. So just be cautious of that is what I would say. And I, it sounds like that's exactly what you say as well. Yes. Be cautious and really question, is this going to help me in the long term? And if, if the answer after five, four or five questions is no, then it's okay to let it go mm-hmm. and just keep doing what you're doing. If it's working for you, it's not, it's okay to change, but don't jump on the quick fix, all or nothing wagon, no wagon, that mindset. Cause th- there is no wagon. Yeah. And there's no way and we're, yeah. we're in this for the long haul. And that's why play is such a, I call it the gateway entry. The play is the act of playing is such a fundamental, easy habit to start with, because once you move your body in any way that makes sense to you, you feel better. And when mm-hmm. you feel better, you eat better. When you eat better, you sleep better. You know, it's a positive catalyst for change. And that's why it's so impactful. That's why my play method and playing is just, I think, one of the greatest things out there that's available to everybody. Yeah, Everybody can play. You just have to and give it, yourself permission. 
it keeps you young. It keeps you in touch yes. with your, your purpose. It, it just, it keeps, and it gives and you joy. Yes. Fun. We all need a yeah. little more fun. Don't you think? We do. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Especially like, I mean, just, you know, we won't go into it, but the state of the world right now, it's like complete chaos. Everybody has so much anxiety, so much stress. It's like, if we can just get back to the basics, and literally one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, we're going to be able to get through it. But we have to be patient and we have to come, I think, come together as a community to, to support each other and hold each other up. And that's why there are people like you who are out there and available to us to teach us how to do this, right? How to create lifelong sustainable change. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you. But, uh, you know, to your point about community, you know, there's nothing better than calling up a friend. And instead of going to say, oh, do you want to go to the gym? What if you said, let's go play? Yeah. People are like, what? I know. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Well, kids have play dates. Why can't adults? And social, isola social isolation is so rampant. Yeah. If we just learn to play together a little more, you can learn more. Who said that? There's uh, someone famous. Forgive me famous person you can learn more in an hour of play than you can in anything else you do with yeah. someone you, just, yeah. you learn a lot about people yeah and yourself well, socialized isolation is another episode we had on the show and I'll put that link in the show notes too because um Steve Cunningham, Cunningham oh gosh I'm gonna Cunningham I think oh it's been a while anyway it's all right um, <laughs> it's like even though we're only in February that was like in 2022, which seems so long ago. Um, anyway, <laughs> right? we created an app for that week called WeTree. So it's an app for social isolation for people who don't have, you know, resources for people nearby. They can actually do this app. It was pretty ingenious of him to create this. It was really cool. But anyway, um, so I would love for you just to kind of recap those three um, actionable takeaways, and then tell the listeners how they can connect with you and learn more from you. Sure. So the three takeaways in the play method, the big takeaways are what's your vision? You aren't bound to a gym for good health. So how do you like to play? What movement is going to matter for you? And how can you make it fun? And keep it simple. The more simple it is, the more you're likely to do it and the more you're going to show up and get the results you want for life. Yeah, absolutely. And as, yeah. And as far as um, getting in touch with me, Janet Olmstead, no L, no H, Janet, O-M-S-T-E-A-D.com, JanetOmstead.com is where you can find out all about me and um, my book. And um, my book's about to actually be re-released on audio because I wanted to serve a greater audience. Mm -hmm. And um so that's about that soon. And you can join my play of the week. I have a newsletter, which you can uh, link to on there. And I put out every Friday, my play of the week with tips and healthy habit insights. So people can live a happier, playful life. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for being here, Janet. Listeners, if you found this information helpful and you know somebody else that it could benefit somebody who needs a little play in their life or is struggling and looking to improve their health, share this episode. There's so much value here. And also, if you would be so kind to leave a rating and review, I would be forever grateful. I know I say this all the time. Uh, out of just sheer hope that someday you'll do it. So <laughs> that is how we grow. That's how I get great guests and all this information. And it just means the world to me when I get to read your rep, your reviews and see what your takeaways are. So if you have time, just take one second and do a quick rating and review. That would be so great. All right. Until next week, have a good one and I will see you then.